families, creating a lifetime of memories. Sadly, some families are denied these important moments due to the sad practice of alienation. These are Families Divided. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Families Divided. I'm your host, Elaine Cobb. I'm also founder and president of Family Access Fighting for Children's Rights. In this week's edition of Families Divided, Dr. Bitta Tabayani will be speaking to us on healing a family's transgenerational trauma through clinical interventions. We'll also hear from Dr. William Burnett, who was one of our upcoming presenters at our live in-person conference in North Carolina in September. I do hope you'll be able to join us. We're looking forward to being in person again and meeting many people going through alienation, as well as meeting all of the experts that will be there with us as well. All of this will be coming to you right after these messages. At Victor's Crown, our focus is on you, our clients. When you arrive, our goal is that you will feel at home from our welcoming atmosphere to our serene surroundings. Everything we do at Victor's Crown is done with our clients in mind. We have comfortable seating areas for both adults and children. A large screen TV with surround sound where clients can be occupied with wholesome entertainment while they wait. We offer complimentary refreshments such as coffee, tea, water, and snacks. Due to the present COVID pandemic, our in-person appointments are restricted to selected cases and those are held in our luxurious outdoor open air meeting space that we affectionately refer to as the COVID cabana, which was built specifically for our clients to offer them the most comfortable and relaxing outdoor space available. All our other clients are offered secured web-based telemed sessions where they can connect with us from anywhere in the world. Divorce and co-parenting are a major life interruption for families, especially the kids, but also for parents and grandparents. And it's even worse in blame-filled, high-conflict cases. When parents engage in alienation by turning the kids against the other parent or grandparents, kids suffer. They're denied the opportunity to build the four big skills necessary for future resilience. New Ways for Families online class can help. Parents learn to use our popular Biff and Ear skills to calm the conflict and stop the hostile emails and texts. And we even have a class for kids and parents to learn together. Research shows a 75% improvement in joint parental decision making after this course is taken, plus overall improvements for kids' well-being. Don't wait to make this affordable investment in your children's future and improve your well-being too. Start learning new ways for your family today at conflictplaybook.com. I'm Dr. Bill Burnett in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm looking forward to the Family Access Conference in Durham, North Carolina in September. The title of my presentation is, New Research Helps Us Understand How Alienated Children Think and Feel. In the last few years, important research has occurred which addresses some of the details of parental alienation theory. This research will help us communicate better with children who are alienated, whether we are evaluators, therapists, or parents. And I'm gonna give you some quick examples of the research that I have in mind. It's been known for many years that alienated children lack ambivalence or engage in a severe level of splitting with regard to their parents. That means that they perceive one parent is totally good and the other parent is totally evil. Recent research has been able to document this splitting in an objective manner 
which is a very important accomplishment. Second, it has also been known for many years that there are levels of severity of parental alienation that is mild, moderate, and severe. That means that the, alienated, that the alienation manifested by the child may be mild, moderate, or severe in severity. Of course, usually it starts with a mild level of alienation and sometimes progresses to moderate or severe. In this research, my colleagues and I have been collecting drawings and other artwork made by alienated children in which we can see the progression from mild to moderate to severe levels of alienation. This artwork helps us look into the mind of the child in order to understand how he is thinking and feeling. A third type of research has not yet been accomplished but I am hoping that forensic practitioners will try to get it started. This is what I have in mind. Many therapists and alienated parents have described how some children transition very quickly from having a normal, loving, satisfying relationship with a parent to being extremely oppositional, belligerent, and hateful. Sometimes this transition happens within a matter of days but some practitioners have described that occasionally it happens even within a matter of minutes. It seems to me that different areas of the brain and different nerve pathways are activated in these different mental states that are so different from each other. I'm proposing that neuroscientists try to demonstrate these two mental states by using functional MRIs with these children. And that, that's a type of brain scan to demonstrate that their brains are operating differently in these two states. In my presentation in Durham, I hope to show that this, these research projects are important for several reasons. For example, if we understand how the child's brain is functioning, it will help us shape our communication, our manner of communication with them. Secondly, we need to understand how these mental mechanisms work in order to design interventions or treatment programs for these children. And finally, thirdly, this type of research helps us prove that parental alienation is real. It is not a hoax. It is a serious mental condition that affects thousands of children and families. I hope to see you all in Durham when we will have an opportunity to discuss these topics in greater detail. In families dealing with alienation, communication during conflict is often very difficult. This fall, Family Access, Fighting for Children's Rights, will present a special in-person conference to address that very issue. Using and Refining Interpersonal Skills will be held September 9th through the 11th at the Marriott Research Triangle Park in Durham, North Carolina. You'll learn from experts how to master skills that can reduce anxiety, anger, and stress in alienation situations. Join event director Elaine Cobb, the founder and president of Family Access Fighting for Children's Rights, and conference moderator Dr. Colleen Murray as they present a lineup of highly respected experts, including keynote speaker Dr. Jeffrey Gardier, plus presentations by Bill Eddy, Megan Hunter, Dr. Joshua Coleman, Dr. Mark Moss, Dr. Mary Alvarez, Dr. Sue Cornbluth, Shazia Sparkman, and Lisa Rothfuss. Mark your calendar now, September 9th through the 11th, for Using and Refining Interpersonal Skills, hosted by Family Access, Fighting for Children's Rights, Steel Partners Foundation, and PAICA, Parental Alienation is Child Abuse. Visit FamilyAccess.info for more details on the conference and secure your attendance. Seating is limited. Hi, my name is Dr. Vita Tebiani and I will be talking to you today in regards to healing a family's transgenerational trauma 
through clinical intervention. Um, before I start, I want to thank Family Separation Clinic for sharing their knowledge and research with me. Transgenerational trauma is trauma that gets passed on from one generation to another and oftentimes can manifest itself into parental alienation. Parental alienation is an attachment trauma. Um, the parent oftentimes cannot contain itself and pours the negativity of their own unresolved trauma onto the child. The negative part of the alienating parent is projected into the parent that is rejected and projected into the child. We often can also see that dynamic with professionals involved or even the system. And uh, that gets very challenging when that happens. The negative part of the alienating parent is needs to get addressed into in therapy. And um, depending on at what point we see the family, um, we need to, as professionals, look at the situation and look at the family structure and address it accordingly. Um, the parent with the unresolved trauma takes control of a situation and oftentimes has a history of maladaptive techniques to manage and control relationships. So when people grow up in families and there is a lack of connection and they learn to control or manipulate, they oftentimes take that um, coping mechanism into their relationships and the next attachment. And so we have to, when we address it therapeutically, we need to look at the power and control dynamic in the family system. As a result of projecting this control and power dynamic into the family system, the other parent feels helpless and is moved aside. And the alienating parent um, may not even be conscious of doing that or meaning to do that. And it can be, it manifests itself in those cases, in milder cases of parent alienation. And it's a spectrum. It can be up to moderate and severe. As a result of that, the, the child develops an all or nothing thinking. Uh, we call it the split mind. And we see that where a child idealizes the, the alienating parent and sees the other parent as all bad. There are other manifestations of parental alienations um, that result as the mind of this child that splits and goes into that trauma state. In therapy, we have to address the power and control dynamic. And there's usually a history of interpartner violence, not necessarily physical, but oftentimes rather emotional or psychological. Um, one dynamic that we often see in these cases are coercive control. Coercive control is an act or a pattern of act of assault, threats, humiliation, or intimidation, or other kind of abuse that is used to harm, punish, or frighten their victim. We also oftentimes see parent-child enmeshment, which means that the parent that is the alienating parent or the aggressor is enmeshed with the child. So, the child becomes, I, I want to use Melanie Klein's term, like an object, not necessarily a physical object, but an object that rallies for the parent that hasn't resolved their trauma. And these kinds of dynamics oftentimes show themselves in the family system as a triangulation. Triangulation of the child in the adult dynamics. So a parent leaks their feelings, that's the parent, that's the alienating parent. They leak their feelings towards the other parent and they leak their hostility, whether deliberately or not. And it creates a traumatic environment for the child. 
when the child is dealing with the other parent who oftentimes is blindsided or feeling powerless. The child gets caught in a loyalty conflict. And that's when the amygdala is part of their brain that fires with a sense of danger. The amygdala fires with a sense of danger. We often call it the fight and flight state. And it's a part of our brain that helps us survive during danger. It's the oldest part of our brain um, where our ancestors, they had to run for their lives if they were in dangers in the jungle. It's that part of our brain that helps us survive. However, in that moment, the child is not aware whether their life is truly, uh, if it's in danger, if it's a matter of life or death, or if it's trauma. So in that moment, the child goes into the flight or the freeze or fight and response. And that usually manifests itself in an aggressive behavior in the children that are alienated. They go into fight response. Some feel depressed, that's the freeze response. And some become very avoidant as a coping mechanism. But parental alienation oftentimes includes some or all of those responses, definitely the fight response. And as the children try to survive this traumatic state, which we call the splitting of the mind, um, oftentimes we see there is an incident where um, it's a tipping point for the child, where they cannot tolerate to be in this constant state of trauma. So in order to cope with the intensity of the trauma, the child then aligns with the aggressor, the parent that seems to be in control and seems to feel safe because they're in charge. And that's when parental alienation dynamic can manifest. When there is a trigger event, the child cannot move back and forth from one parent to the other. And we see that often in cases of um, divorce where children have two homes and the child resists going into the rejected parent's home. And unfortunately, a lot of um, pro professionals up to date are not trained in this dynamic. And that causes a whole nother um, issue in that realm because there is a mental health component and then it also adds a legal component to this. Um, in these cases, it's very important that all family members are treated because they are all in their defense mechanisms in an abnormal situation, and it's a survival mechanism. As part of the treatment, um, we often have to ask as professionals to court for a protective space to do the work. And the alienating parent is given the chance to work on herself, himself, themselves with another parental alienation specialist. Uh, we see the child's experience and move the child into the parents um, to engage um, into an integrated mind and engage the rejected parent on this journey. We also train the rejected parent to um, deal with the child in a therapeutic manner and engage in therapeutic parenting. We see the child's experience um, and the treatment needs to include to balance the power dynamic with the child uh, that is reactive and reactive towards the rejected parent. And the parent needs to be very patient with this um, transition. Um, the treatment goal in these cases are to have an integrated sense of self for the child. Because as a child goes through this trauma, the authentic self gets lost and the child becomes a vehicle to store the unmet needs or the trauma of the alienating parent. So in therapy, 
we oftentimes have to address one, the control and power dynamic of the family system and address the omnipotence of the child. And two, really help the child to feel more integrated and connect to the authentic self. As we work on connecting the authentic self to the rejected parent, and at the same time, have the alienating parent in therapy and have the alienating parent really look deeply into their history and see how they got to the point that they did and take some ownership for their part and heal the trunk that got them into that position. Now, ultimately, this model is a no blame model. And we look at integrating the family as a whole into healing themselves and restructuring the family system. Parental alienation is child abuse. Um, though, again, this intervention is not blaming, but rather an opportunity to resolve transgenerational trauma. Uh, the treatment uh, it also includes to look at the omnipotent, omnipotent self and show the child boundaries. That's very important. And um, watch the child that is weaponized to, to unfold into their authentic self and, um, and help them through that journey. We need uh, proper intervention in those cases. That's very important. Look, even before the child gets caught into parental alienation and the dynamic, we can oftentimes see between couples when there is a power imbalance. Rule of thumb, uh, we look at connection versus power and control manipulation. And if a couple is communicating with power and manipulation, that's a red flag. And early intervention is very important. And I cannot stress how when one is in a partnership and looks at that, seek help. Because as you go on with this power and control dynamic in your relationship, it will only manifest itself um, in traumatic uh, situations that may oftentimes also lead in parental alienation if you do choose to have children. So we look at this oftentimes when I get a couple in a session, I look at the trauma. What is your trauma? What have you brought into the relationship? And can you take ownership? And really look at this um, couplehood as an opportunity to mirror you and heal as a result of that. Because ultimately, a long-lasting healthy relationship needs to be based on compassion. So whether the couple comes in and we do early intervention to avoid parental alienation cases or to a family that is still together and we see triangulation and again, power and control, or to a case where a family has split now and the child is rejecting one parent or more moderate and severe cases where the child in a lot of separated families or divorce cases completely refuse contact. So it's a spectrum and it's really important to seek therapy and address that within the relationship as soon as possible. Ultimately, we want the entire family system to be whole and healthy. That's the goal. Um, part of it is the rejected parent also needs to heal um, because their sense of self has been erased. So there is a lot of recovery and grief that goes with that for the parent that's been rejected. This is um, oftentimes a situation where there's an interlock between legal and mental health intervention, and the professional has to be knowledgeable about the mental health and legal, um, uh, legal factors that are involved. When people are aware of the harm of defensive splitting, it helps at times. Um, 
to, to remove the power that the child is having and really go deep into the trauma state that is present and really take ownership of that and address that. Those are some of the better, best cases, easier cases. And um, that's our hope that I personally hold for families. Um, a healthy interlock between parents and therapist is essential. And um, the therapist oftentimes has to empower the rejected parent and support the therapeutic parenting. It's really important to maintain boundaries and have the alienating parent with a separate therapist who is a parental alienation therapist and have another parental alienation therapist work with the rejected parent and the children and um, hope for the best for this journey. As a closing note, I would say intervention is the key. The earlier the intervention is done, the better hopes we have for the outcome. If you are in an interpartner violence um, relationship, seek help, seek guidance. And if you see your relationship being ruled by power and control, seek help, look at the trauma, look at your history, look at your original family. Did they use power and control to communicate? How can you move to a more compassionate and non-blaming um, communication and look at the trauma history and use this opportunity to resolve the trauma that was passed on to you and probably outside your control. So look at that, look at this as an opportunity to heal. And if you're in a family that is affected by that, please get the help to heal as a family as a whole. Thank you. Next week on Families Divided, Dr. Colleen Murray speaks with Dr. Mandy Mathewson on the topic, Assessments and Interventions. Family Access, Fighting for Children's Rights has two important email addresses you can use to reach us, to request prayer for your family, or to suggest a subject matter you would like to see covered on the Families Divided TV program. To request prayer for your family, please email us at prayersforfamilies at gmail.com. Is there a subject you would like covered on Families Divided? If so, send your email to requests for familiesdivided at gmail.com. We are here to help you in your journey.